No problem. Excellent. Yeah, so, no, that was an interesting conversation. But um, do you want to, did, did you kind of pick up what we were talking about then? Or? Uh, just, uh, just, I just came in kind of late there, uh, the last couple of minutes there. But uh, Yeah. yeah. Um, we got into yeah. It's kind of related to our conversation too, but and, and the efforts we're doing with the uh, open source Steam camps. Uh -huh. uh, but basically, uh, that was Adam, and he he did Open EEG. It's another open source hardware project. Uh -huh. But he said that, look, man, like well, the main challenge for what you're trying to do is that you're just gonna continue the concentration of wealth with your open source because. If it's not you, someone else will take it and run a big company on it and we'll get no better in terms of one of the central questions that we try to ask and that is how do you distribute wealth more equitably to more people uh, in a better economy? So it's it's interesting that he was um, coming up with that question which he's like, well, no, it's like it's going to get concentrated. There's not a good way to, to solve that. So that's where we left the discussion, which I disagree with because there are different ways where if you create you have to pay attention to that that aspect how are you actually being able to distribute uh, the production the open source blueprints how can you get many people involved in that so it doesn't become a centralized thing I think you can the open source lends itself well, to that but so my experience with some of those things are um, it has to do with individuals at that level right and uh, mm -hmm. um, for example, not everybody's going to be a machinist. Not everybody's going to be an electronics whiz. So mm -hmm. that's how, just like in the, the primitive uh, Stone Age villages, there was one guy that was a good flint napper and another mm -hmm. guy that was the, the great stalker that could sneak up on animals, right? So everywhere in history you see this division of labor, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're, the, if you're the big dog hot whammy hunter of the village, right, People are going to go, oh, hey, Marcin, um, um, I need a, a buffalo or else I'm going to starve this winter. Okay, well, then you need to, you need to pay me, uh, you know, in moccasins or uh, spear tips or whatever, right? Yeah. And so it's the same thing. It's a concentration in individuals at that level, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, so if it's true open source, right, and everybody can do it, then everybody's their own manufacturing center, right? Yeah. And uh, but that that's not efficient. Okay, sure. You know, I I would think about it more at the village scale, right, as opposed to the individual scale, right. So yeah. this little town in the middle of nowhere, right, okay, now can manufacture machines that they need to farm with, or or per, you know, I don't know what. And uh, but within that little town or village. You know, those skills or concentrations are siloed in ind individuals. It's just the way of the world, I think. And, uh, um, you know, I used to teach welding many years ago, right, in, in a school. And there was people that were never going to be welders that went to school because they wanted to learn how to be a welder, but they didn't have the hand-eye coordination to, to do it. Okay, so no matter how hard they tried, they were never going to get it. And um, uh, so it was probably better for them to be something else. Maybe they could still be in the industry, but maybe they became a salesperson instead of an actual practitioner, right? So, uh, so and we see this in the skilled trades all the time. There's just people that they can't grasp the. Um, uh, well, it's it's not their it's, it's not that they're defective in any way or whatever. This is just not their thing, right? And. Uh, um, so they have to find something else to, to concentrate on, <laughs> but that's just my experience. So. Yeah. So you're saying that it is possible to distribute the product is your bottom line that yeah, it's possible, but, but more at the village level. Well, yeah, that's what, that's the way I would think about it. Right. And, uh, um, so, okay. So you, let's look at the village again. So every, every TP in the village has got a CNC mill. And a, uh, and, and a 3D, 3D printer, printer and a tracker. Now what? Okay. <laughs> there's no there's no excess energy in the system for anybody to to make use of, right? Because that's what everybody's about, right? Is I, I need more I need to farm more so I have excess energy so that I don't have to work as hard, right? And uh, yeah, um, you know, 
back in the uh, when there was there's no uh, you know the life on this planet was uh, was basically these single cell things swimming around in the ocean, right? That to make that next jump into multi cell organisms and and expand into what we know today as the flora and fauna that were there had to be this energy input. They had to capture additional energy to get over the hump, right? And it's a similar dichotomy with uh, with uh, um, people that are living on the fringes or uh, below um, kind of the mean the, the mean level, right? They need a boost in energy, right? And so if they have access to one of your tractors, right? Now, hey, my, now I can farm uh, five acres instead of one acre or, or, or 200 square meters or whatever, right? And, uh, and so now, oh, hey, now I got, I got plenty of food for my family. I don't have to hustle so much. I can concentrate on improving my, uh, my systems and, and all this. And, and the excess I sell to you across the street, right? And uh, um, so if, if you completely level the, the playing field, there's, there's, no, there's no steps for anybody to step on to, to, uh, to change their situation, right? And uh, it's, I don't know, that's kind of more phil philosophical. But let's talk about stuff you want to build. Let's talk about stuff you want to build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you want to build? So I want to build a new civilization, but okay. no, like right now we're. So maybe let's start at the steam camp because the steam camp is okay. what I approached you with. But sure. uh, there is the C basic set of CNC machines and some mm -hmm. of the derivative products around that. Um, is was it? Did you go through that? In I, I did, and uh, I, I guess, guess uh, um, so. I guess I have questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. For starters, why do they have to be CNC machines? And uh, yeah, because uh, what if they, now they need a computer, and now they need software to run that. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, to me, what you need is well, they, they don't have to be CNC uh, machines, right? Some people just need access to metal cutting tools to improve their lot in life, right? And uh, something they can build out of locally sourced materials and uh, scrap metal and things like that. Totally agree with that, right? Mm -hmm. It's akin to the village blacksmith, right? Yeah. This is the guy that collected uh, scrap metal behind his uh, his shop, right? And we came and he said, hey, my, my tractor broke. He went out of his pile and he found something and hammered it into what you needed to fix your tractor, right? Yeah. And he doesn't need a CNC machine. Um, he just needs to be shown. So if you're training a blacksmith, they just have to be shown the the, the basic tools. The simpler, the better, right? And um, yeah. how to how to uh, approach the materials or uh, that that process, right? Right. So, yeah. But tell tell me what your vision is. This yeah. is hard to understand, right? I mean, I I've got plenty of my own opinions, right? <laughs> right. Right. And. Yeah, and uh, the vision, like, okay, if we focus it on the uh, steam camp itself. So the vision there was to teach people a basic and qu quite diversified skill set. So that's like little little CNC machines like 3D printers, mm -hmm. your circuit maker, and little mill. Yep. And then derivative products, like in including your own uh, motors, mm -hmm. battery packs, and controllers, and being the, able to do something like make your own microcontroller from components and things like that so a little package of things that are also scalable by design and modular by design so that they can be applied to larger things like for example if we want to build ourselves a cnc torch table for cutting metal to build our tractors with effectively then uh, we can 3d print the parts use the basic kind of design methodology for the cnc axis and scale it up which we've done and do that so it's a bootstrapping scalable modular kind of a platform uh, mm -hmm. the idea there was to teach uh, like much more than the hardware there it's also the collaborative design methods so how right. to use open source software and other tool chains how do you work with repositories and wikis and and getting that idea that okay you can break a problem down into many many parts and a lot of people can work on it together so that you can kind of turn the hardware question to what software did by modularly breaking down big piece of code into small chunks mm -hmm. they're able to have like thousand person teams work on it all at the same time using repositories and commit mechanisms so we're trying to do that for hardware teach people the basics of that so in the steam camp um, we also go 
it's it's like a product development camp because each steam camp we take some product and we develop it until it's it's a really decent product mm -hmm. the idea there is to to make it as happen i'm trying to collect a team of instructors that pretty much rock stars who can teach this so that we can prepare all this high quality cu curriculum uh, so this effectively becomes a, a method for open product development that can scale by involving both the instructors and some of the people that we teach will also uh, get to get to the point of becoming meaningful developers mm -hmm. as well so it's uh, in a nutshell a scalable self-funding way for open product development is the theme there now the other part about this is that we're also going to run incentive challenges on a platform it's called hero x uh, which is a spin-off of the x prize it's a cr incentive challenge where we put up a prize and everyone um, works on it together so that way we can get like we're looking at a 3d printed open source professional grade cordless drill that's made from waste plastic that's a what we're going to try to launch our goal is to launch that september 2020 um, and then expecting thousands of people to collaborate to get a really good drill but also build in some of the enterprise infrastructure so that we can get that on shelves and get people producing that in distributed locations uh, that involves actually the open source production engineering the 3d printers and also plastic recycling that allows you to take scrap to make it into 3d printing filament so that's a pretty decent technical challenge there um, so then the so, steam uh, camps so does that stream already exist the uh, uh recycling plastic into uh, 3d printing filament that exists there's there's definitely some open source machines that do that we've built one here so we for example make our own abs um, we have used pellets some people have gone from the waste stream and if you use the weights waste stream then you have to get really knowledgeable about that so we're trying to streamline that whole process that you you know your feedstocks you can do the proper quality control on it and and all that so that's part of the challenge okay. um, but also yeah so kind of like the main main things right now is to try to d develop a way to develop products collaboratively by involving a lot of people and there is a real shortcoming to the open hardware development method that you also you a lot of times have this superhero effort like one or two people that develop something like you know i've been doing that mm -hmm. uh but i'm trying to also build teams around that and the latest in that is okay uh, we ran the last steam camp successfully it was great uh you know i did a lot of the heavy lifting but now i'm saying okay let's make the curriculum better let's get more people involved so that's kind of the the mindset i have right now okay let's do it together mm -hmm. uh let me not fall into this trap of trying to solve it myself and all that because we're after all our fundamental mission is to be collaborative design right. so that's kind of kind of the framework we're trying to get into hmm. okay yeah. so um the uh is it gonna what so what is the what is the root problem that you were trying to solve here well um in terms of a global issue or just with the business with the development of what were the steam camps well this this started out okay i watched your ted talk right yeah. this started out with uh you know the way you yeah, I bought a tractor, my tractor yeah. broke, and I got pissed, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so I built my own tractor, right? And, yeah. uh, okay, so I, I see how you get to that, and then at some point you said, geez, if I could just do this, I could solve this this group, this bigger problem that I see that's facing the world, right? And so what is, what is that problem that you're trying to solve? And uh, well, yes. I, I understand that this is one step in, in Yes, man, that's one right? step. And, uh, uh, what what we're trying to do is transition the economic paradigm of humanity mm -hmm. from competitive to collaborative what that means is that a company myself anybody anybody that makes products or develops anything they go to a collaborative process instead of reinventing the wheel and doing a lot of competitive waste and being secretive and doing patents and all this kind of stuff um, trying to unleash human productivity so that uh, one outcome of that is once you get things more collaborative, then society changes uh, to a much more equitable distribution of wealth, like which is the one core issue that the current economy has not solved. We've solved production, but we haven't really solved distribution, as in distribution of wealth. So that's that's kind of that's the big picture. Does that make any sense? Or yeah, it does. And um, um, it's uh, you know I don't know about getting into the 
I mean, humans by nature are competitive, right? So uh, mm -hmm. you're kind of going against nature on some of these things a little bit. And uh, um, sure, col collaboration is pretty satisfying when you can create that environment, right? Okay. Yeah. And uh, but there has to be um, you have to create an environment that uh, yeah. where you've already leveled the the playing field, right? Okay. So, uh, um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but uh, I don't, I don't know how to do it. And, oh, it is impossible. That's why we're doing it. We want to do the, solve an impossible problem here. But okay, but I, I'm going to catch you on something that you said. We are by nature competitive. That's mm -hmm. negotiable. We, when put into depending on our environment, we can be competitive. We can be collaborative. They actually did some very interesting psychological studies. I was just reading about this yesterday about uh, in a certain experiment they showed that uh, when the essentially when when the environment was you got to survive people competed when environment became such that you got to cooperate they uh, it was possible to create the environment that everyone became com collaborative as opposed to competitive so it really depends I mean it's our, I believe it completely it's our choice and I, I think that we can do more by uh, collaboration and by competition um, so that's that's what we're trying to, to do because uh, we see that the competitive environment uh, meaning like you know commerce is war kind of thing we're running up into a lot of challenges like environmental and social challenges that you know, we kind of got to solve so I think we can do better by collaboration mm -hmm. yeah well yeah that, I mean that's a tricky thing to create right I mean yeah. when, when if you look at an individual company when they when they create a collaborative environment, they're honestly they're probably shocked by it, and they want to preserve it at all costs, right? And uh, sorry, they want to preserve the competitive, or no, no, they want to preserve the collaborative, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it's not something that happens naturally, okay? Right. So, um, so they have to nurture this, and they have to feed it, and they have to they have to maintain it, and it and it's very easy to upset that balance. Okay? Yeah. Um, where the competitive thing is, um, I think, more, I don't know, I, it's kind of the more natural human tendency, I think. And, uh, but, uh, I, you know, I've worked in collaborative environments, right? And, uh, but it has to be um, psychologically safe for all the participants, too, to, to voice oh, yeah. their ideas and, and understand that their input is heard and uh, that the, the playing field is is you know everybody can contribute right and so how do you how do you create that environment yeah so, oh yeah i'm telling you if you if you can figure if you can figure out how to create that environment then uh, then you're that's the, <laughs> that's the uh the, the tricky one to solve i think and, oh uh, yeah 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 no uh, that's that's exactly our problem anything, statement I mean, anything's yeah. possible at that point and uh yeah yeah. But uh, but I can also understand, right? So if we're if we're all trapped down a well, and the only way we're going to get out is if we stand on each other's shoulders, mm -hmm. and uh, um, but then the <laughs> that's right competitive guy is well, I want to be at the top of the uh, I want to be at the I want to be the last to climb up everybody's shoulders because I want to be the first one out of the well, right? And uh, <laughs> so the competitive <laughs> they're still yeah. the competitive guy, right? Yeah. And the guy at the bottom. He's like, okay, well, am I going to get out, right? And because uh, we need everybody, and uh, otherwise we're not going to make it. And uh, uh, so you have to create. Everybody has to trust one another, and yeah. uh, um, and that takes time to build those kinds of uh, those kinds of relationships. And uh, it's, it's not something that's easy to, uh, in my in my opinion, it's not something that's easy to transplant and create a nucleus. Uh, um, um, you know kind of at will like, not impossible but difficult right yeah yep yeah. yeah. and a lot of the infrastructures that are created that exist today are quite competitive so it's about reformulating various infrastructures like okay if we don't have the patent system what do we have then uh, how do we go about it or whatever you always have to think about what's the structure that operates in a different way because we'll we'll need that kind of support like all the infrastructures yes we need it we need them uh, right now we're, we're just unfortunately filled with a lot of competitive infrastructure 
that enforces that as the normal way to do that's yeah. why you're probably saying that's the that's a natural thing i don't say it's natural it's just how we design we uh evolved to this present state but i think we can improve that yeah i think a lot of that has to do with our reptilian brain the survival instinct which hasn't been updated since ten thousand years ago when things were much more dangerous than today so yeah well our, our brain's doing things that uh without our permission and uh yeah. that's pretty well known and uh that's something that uh um is well we're not reprogrammable so we have to that, that's still there and it, it will be there for a while um so it has to be dealt with so but so let's talk about your steam camp a little bit so um yeah. where, where, where's uh you had one in austria is that right no we had we had one in can in the kansas city area oh, okay so that we had like 18 people show up uh -huh. um, it was good we we built 3d printers we learned a lot of stuff we we started on a on a larger cnc machine that we basically the same universal axis like the small axis okay. except with two inch shafts so it's like really supersizing it mm -hmm. for heavy duty applications so we got initial prototype on that uh, barely putting the axes together but yeah yeah uh, based on that result I mean people had a good time it was a great learning experience for everybody we decided to take that further and then thinking about simplifying the curriculum um, we learned that well first of all let's have a project where everyone takes it home that's one of the changes the other change is the the shift to okay let's have a number of people collaborate on a curriculum so that we it can be richer and we can actually pay everybody uh, mm -hmm. to do that uh, by running multiple camps at the same time so that's the new new thing we're trying to run a number of these uh, 12 of these at the same time right now so with oh, wow. okay. yeah so we're we're like really trying to go go for it uh, and looking for people and I've seen it's really hard <laughs> like <laughs> Like, for example, Adam in that last discussion who says that, no, you're just going to concentrate all wealth if you go open source, uh, which we have to f finish up that discussion. But anyway, interesting. Uh, but haven't found too many people. We've got like t uh, three people or so on board um, that are, looks like they're quite interested in running the camps and learning everything around it. But it, it means that you would prepare some of the curriculum and also learn uh, from other instructors. So it's really about a learning environment. Mm -hmm. uh, the collaborative team that does that I think a lot of people are having a trouble uh, seeing like uh, can we do really good products or can like I don't know I, I'm just the response hasn't been so positive so far I thought everyone would be jumping on and I'd be flooded with a full team by now but it's it's a little hard I'm finding yeah it's um, well it's I think it's a I don't know just from my perspective I think it's a, a kind of a difficult thing to explain right and it is um, and to, you know, to explain to people, right? And if if you, if people can't understand it, then they're not going to get they're not going to get behind it, yeah. right? And yeah. uh, and I can see that you're certainly interested in doing this, and yeah. uh, um, so you got to I guess you got to put your salesman hat on a little bit, yeah, and definitely sell your product a little bit here, right? And yeah. Uh, um, and sure, what I see is, uh, okay, fine, you develop this curriculum. And uh, so in this camp that you guys had in, in Kansas City, have any of the participants, uh, have you followed up with any of those folks? And are they using that? Are they building their own? Uh, have they finished theirs and now they're doing something with it? Or? Um, not a lot. There, there's some positive outcome, like I'm in contact with a video guy who uh, we're talking about how do we actually we were actually continuing the like creating promotional materials on that like video material with an intent that he he is potentially interested in teaching this this material there's one other guy who two other guys that are actually right now that's that's kind of longer term relationship from before but they actually have one of our brick presses and mm -hmm. we're building a compressed earth block micro house in belize in february mm -hmm. which we kind of solidified those plans during the the last steam camp it's somewhat unrelated but uh but beyond that no it's not not a lot of follow through mm -hmm. on it well only only like three three people took printers home with them because for oh. everyone else it was just uh they were participating in it so but that's that's what we'd like to address that yeah we are building skills you think it and was, tools you think it was more of just a curiosity thing and uh it's, people have a little extra money and they said oh this looks like it would be fun 
And it, that's exactly right. I mean, right now, our market is pretty much the people with money who can afford and get edutained in some mm -hmm. way. Right. Which I kind of see that, okay, that's going to help us develop the products, but the real deal would be people starting the enterprise around that, um, which we're working on. That's, that's the difficult uh -huh. part. We have not gotten major uptake of any of this. We found that this is way... The, bound, the, the the barriers to entry are too high. Nobody's right. just, you know, spends five or 10K on a new tractor from scratch and right. <laughs> all of that. So no, it's very limited, but we're working on it. That's uh, so part of it to scale this up is first educate more people to be developers through the Steam Camps, run mm -hmm. the incentive challenges. We're also planning on a, a three month summer of extreme design build next year, mm -hmm. where we build like more tractors, actually more houses with the tractors and other crazy stuff like the CNC torch table and the, uh, big mill and other things so we, we're going to get pretty serious next year doing that and in fact i mean <laughs> if you'd be available f for that for teaching that could, could uh, discuss that with you but we're, we're looking for instructors for that for on site and mm -hmm. it'll be full three months but we're looking at people who can stay there and be instructors for like two weeks or longer mm -hmm. so that's kind of how we're looking for that uh, but that's another thing we're going to be doing and yeah, in the u.s yeah that's that's going to be in our headquarters the kansas city area uh -huh. yeah um, but there, it's that's another part where we actually do a lot of the build-outs. So a lot of the prototyping has ha been happening in our uh, core facility here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that that's where you are, Kansas City? Yeah, Kansas City area, Maysville, Missouri. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I uh, it's uh, it's very intriguing, and uh, like I said, I don't know if I fully grasp your the the whole uh, the whole package here, right? And uh, um, you know, I've at some level you I've already developed some some of this curriculum that you mentioned, right? And uh, um, so a lot of these things are already available. And uh, so I guess uh, you know I, I, I'm a I'm a book guy, okay? So uh, I have a, a gigantic library at home, right? And uh, this is my my source material, right? So I. I kind of consider the whole engineering discipline and, and all that kind of open source, right? Uh, you go to your local library, right? And, uh, and uh, you know, you want to build a tractor? Okay, well, study tractors and, uh, and then build a tractor. Um, so you want to build a brick press? Well, somebody's probably already built one, like, like you, and maybe uh, you want a different size, so you, you change that. Yeah. Um, so a lot of these things are, are freely available already, and uh, um, so, and but I understand trying to develop a specific curriculum too, right? That uh, that's focused on a, a set of tasks and. Um, yeah, can I add something uh, to that? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, like like a lot of that is open source sesh, but when it comes to like one of the uh, the outcomes of the the camp is that we do continuous product improvement on very specific things that end up in a real economically viable product. So not just like a one-off, but also consider the manufacturability and all of that, those other aspects. Okay, so, all right, so you say economic viability yes. and manufacturability. So what that implies is that somebody that's making this is selling these, right? They can be, absolutely. Okay, so... That's um, the goal, that's the goal. Okay, so they're selling them. So now we're we're back to our village, right? So you got the tractor maker in the village, and he sells tractors to everybody in the village. Now what? And uh, he uh, he has to move to a different product, right? And um, or his neighbor across the yeah. way says, "I don't like your tractor, yeah. and, and I'm going to improve it, and I'm going to put a bigger motor on it, and yeah. uh, and now my tractor's better." Yep. And uh, so you're back to the competitive thing again. And uh, so, you know, w once you get into the, the sale of things, right, um, you, it, it, you're introducing competition again, I think, and in, into the equation. And uh, to me, it's, I guess, uh, uh, here's what I thought your, your thing was about, like, I'm imagining some uh, impoverished village in Belize or something like that, where these people, uh, a group of people is living below the poverty level, right? There's no excess energy in the system. Everything that they do is 
is trying to just keep their families from starving to death, right? And um, so Marson and his, his steam camp parachute in and um, yeah. say, hey, look at all these dead cars you guys have. Let's, we, let's make this into a, uh, uh, a brick press. And now you guys can, can, uh, you can, can press, press bricks, bricks and you can sell, you, you can, can give them to the other village or you can build your houses out of these things or, uh, um, or sell them to the other village or trade for food or whatever or something like that. That's kind of more what I thought. Uh, well, yeah, no, that's 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 exactly what we have in mind that when we oh, okay. talk about when we talk about enterprise mm -hmm. that's a one great enterprise what what i see is that that could apply to america it could apply to belize like i mean we're going mm -hmm. down to belize to do exactly that and maybe mm -hmm. that's going to be the market that really takes off uh, uh, so maybe but, but it's more more than that it's like we don't want to just go down there and make stuff if we're going to do that we want to take the local stakeholders and teach them how to build their own micro factories that's we're more right. into the education part okay. but we also need products because our product is our project is not scaling because we don't really have any financial feedback loops we we are not funded by any foundations we're bootstrap right. funded right so, so you, you gotta, gotta you gotta, gotta fund it internally, internally first so that you can yeah. perpetuate it right so. and also to prove that the products actually work like if they can mm -hmm. be uh, demonstrated in the marketplace that means we actually have something to offer and it will spread uh, much more yeah yeah so, so how, how do you get, get that, that follow through, through? that's the uh one of the one of the kickers right well follow through as in in the steam camps we're saying okay so we're gonna run them continuously and we impro improve the products on a continuing basis so we take mm -hmm. exactly where we left off and hopefully the instructors are sticking around and that's that's why we're building our team of people who want to do this for a living to you got to start with making a living yourself first and mm -hmm. uh, by either teaching people producing things and things like that mm -hmm. so it's a, just a different model of doing things instead of the the centralized factory just a more distributed pattern where it's like it's either open source micro factories workshops kits mm -hmm. uh, but still uh, efficient productivity on just on a different scale yeah interesting okay, okay. right mm -hmm. the, the main question right now is uh, i don't know if you can help with that but that would be to to find people who would be interested in being the instructors well i i, I would, would say, say that, that i'm uh, um I, i'm still interested you still have my attention okay okay and, uh, um and i, I probably, probably have, have some skills that are relevant, relevant. yeah okay. And uh, I'm certainly interested in talking more and, and advancing our conversation uh, further, and uh, and see where it goes. So I'm not I'm not turned off. I'm not uh, uh, disagreeing with your philosophy. I uh, um, I'm not sure how I uh, how I can contribute in a meaningful way, and um, um, just yet. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Let's let's explore. I mean, you mentioned something about okay, a lot of the curriculum that we have in, in those four or nine days, uh, you might be able to contribute to some of that. Um, should we take a look at that in more detail? Because a lot of that is is more more kind of like more around the CNC and microcontrollers and electronics and things. Um, do you yeah, have you, really how much have you worked with? Um, you, do you have some of the skills to actually prepare some of those elements there, or so um, the uh, I've never built a CNC machine. I've run plenty of them, so yeah. uh, that's uh, kind of an, I know how they're supposed to work. Mm -hmm. and, um, I suppose, and uh, so my career has been about uh, designing and building uh, yeah. uh, equipment. Okay, a lot of it, and yep, yep, yep. Uh, now. The my areas of weakness would be the uh, probably the electronic side. We, uh, I mean, I, I have uh, what I would call motor control skills. Uh, where this is industrial electric, you know, where you have motors that are driving pumps and things like that, right? And not so much uh, microprocessor uh, um, or yeah. CNC brains necessarily. So that would be my area of weakness. I mean, I know what they're supposed to do, but uh, I've never yeah. designed one. And um, and honestly, a lot of that work's already kind of done. There's, I believe, plenty of open source uh, um, type controllers uh, that do what yeah. you want them to do, right? Right. So the danger is reinventing the wheel, too, and, uh, and creating... Uh, um, 
Well, I don't know. I mean, um, um, so yeah, I, I would say I'm weak on some of those things, but uh, strong on the, uh, um, the engineering machine design yeah. fundamentals and, uh, and how things actually get made physically. So, yeah. uh, um, actual manufacturing. So yeah. those are areas that I could contribute in. So. Yeah. Have you ever done any like thermal design? Like for example, heat, one thing that we need to do is a simple extruder for the 3D printer, like, do you have any thermal design experience? Uh, yeah, we've done some um, um, some devices that were uh, heated uh, uh, filament processing and uh, uh, filament processing. Like, what what do you mean by filament? Like, 3D printing filament processing? No, no. These were uh, this was a, a machine that uh, processed uh, carbon fiber filaments into. Uh, woven sheet and then cured the uh, epoxy prepreg uh, that was part of that matrix. So it was basically making uh, a carbon fiber cloth. Uh, you, we, uh, did you design an actual machine to make cloth from fiber? Um, yeah, we, well, what, the end that we did was the, uh, the filament processing that made the flat sheet and, um, and, then, um, and then chopped it into pieces that got formed into honeycombs later on. So. Uh, it was for a, a company called Hexel that uh, that makes uh, and supplies composite materials to aerospace stuff. Um, is what it was. So these were uh, uh, big, long uh, um, conveyor lines that with heated rolls and uh, pinches and things like that. So, um, but uh, so yeah, we did that. Uh, we made a yeah. Built a machine that did uh, that made a hex core uh, that was a welded plastic uh, sheet that made hex cells to make uh, lightweight filler materials for aerospace stuff too. Um, so basically, it made honeycomb out of plastic is what it did. So uh, we built that machine. And that, there's a lot of motion control on that machine. Um, yeah. 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 So a lot of scientific test equipment. So kind of across the board, but. But uh, some extrusion, but not necessarily heated extrusion. So, um, um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the idea is that we contribute, collaborate on a curriculum, and then learn all this other stuff from others. Uh, would you have the time and energy and interest to, to learn like all the other content? Like, so, yeah, which includes. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm pretty busy with my yeah. uh, with my uh, my day job, which is where I am now. So I work 40 hours a week, or actually more than that. And uh, I have a YouTube channel that I maintain, right. and my own hobby stuff that uh, that I'm working on, my own stuff that I'm developing. So um, time wise, uh, like I said, a lot of these things I I already have. I've written two books, and uh, you're welcome to use that material and. Uh, uh, in your curriculum, uh, if if it's uh, if it's pertinent, and uh, What's, what are the two books? Uh, one's called the uh, Sink or Swim Metalworking, and one's called Metalworking: Doing It Better. So these are core skills, core type skills in metalworking. Okay, uh, tips and tricks to become a better metal worker, uh, sheet metal welding, uh, machine work, that kind of stuff, and uh, yeah. um, how to set up a shop. You know. Uh, all, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, and um, um, so, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, uh, I would say that I don't have a lot of excess time. So, uh, if you're talking about a three month excursion to, uh, um, you know, teach some, um, teach some folks how to uh, uh, design and uh, put together a, a, a device or a machine. Sounds like fun, but uh, realistically, I don't think I have that kind of time. And um, um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily shut the door. Uh, I would. I can consult or contribute uh, bits and pieces uh, as I have time to do that. Right, and mm -hmm. I think that's fine. And we could work out what that looks like. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as far as, should we take a look at any of the curriculum or 
or yeah, if you got a second um i'm gonna have to cut loose here in about 10 minutes so okay. uh, uh but we can look at that yeah yeah um so there's so so part of it is okay one is collaborative literacy um how to start open source projects uh mm -hmm. f things like freecad roadmaps um repositories and basically open source product development methods then the universal access such as the the C, the small motion robotics system that we use that's also scalable to, to larger parts what we would do is we build three axes like that and then attach a quickly disconnectable 3d print head and the way we do the other three machines is it's a quick disconnect uh, plotter for plotting circuits and then etching them and then there's a uh, making the actual electric motor and using that to hang on the machine to uh, and then controlling that with CNC using same same kind of a universal controller with uh, pretty much universal microcontrollers and universal components that are in there uh, but the idea is to refine that to get that to a very nice state of refinement that's a very practical machine and in the first iteration we might do decent but we want to develop that so it's it's a really great kit that people can make sell so make what would be themselves. the motivation for making your own electric motor the idea that it's scalable and it it'll, would allow you to um, well for one of course is the education but the scalability part to do that and also make it quite efficient so then getting you know maybe start with some 3d printing go to aluminum that's all these techniques are covered coil winding jigs and things like that it's, so it's largely about design but it ends up in practical design like uh, for example on a on a 3d printed version we can still get to very high efficiency it won't have the same energy density because of the heating but you can consider doing that and making a a viable motor for for a bootstrap machine that's actually functional and and quite good so we're saying okay let's press the limits like what are the limits of this simple kind of fabrication that's assisted by the digital fabrication aspect of the package um, um, towards ending up with practical products uh, because of then if you can mill if say then you can kind of bootstrap up to higher levels of productivity so that's that's the purpose but i think the biggest thing that you get out of that is if you know how to design that then you that's a very powerful skill that can be used to make larger things like the same motor that we're going to make you can scale that up to then so, well, to an electric yeah. vehicle motor uh -huh. things like that i mean a lot of these i mean they the, a lot of these things are are mass produced right yeah and uh, um so why why are you starting there, right? To me, it's, it, you know, why not start with how to how to uh, smelt your own steel? Okay, why choose uh, uh, the motor as a scalable platform? Well, to me, a yeah. lot of these things, you know, you're going to spend hundreds of hundreds of hours making your your electric motor when this is something that is probably in the scrap pile, and if you reprocess what already exists right now you, you're you're much further along in the in the equation right so I, I agree with the controller and the uh you know the universal axis this this makes sense right okay so are you going to make your own screws are you going to make your own feel no you're going to re you're going to you're going to use what you got what you can get your hands on right and yeah uh, you, you do whatever you ties all this together and makes it useful right okay right and uh, what makes your tractor useful is an assembly of parts, right? Each individual part is useless on its own, um, but, but the 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 win is when that thing's assembled, right? And yep. it can do some work, right? right? Like a CNC mill is just a pile of screws and bearings laying on the floor, right? And uh, so why not make your own bearings? And, and those are scalable, but it's not practical either because you can buy these are commodity items that that exists in the waste stream along with motors and uh, um, and a lot of these uh, uh, these kind of articles that you would combine into uh, uh, to produce a, uh, a a thing that produces something else 
uh, additional work or additional products or whatever, right? And uh, so, you, why reinvent the wheel? You're because your battles in kind of a uh, yeah. I mean, what you're saying is, uh, like, for let's take the induction furnace. Well, uh -huh. we're building up for that. So, using the same universal controller and some of the power handling stages that we're introducing right within the steam camp, you es essentially have a full controller for an induction furnace. So that's that's how that would relate. Uh, mm -hmm. as a very concrete example or for example if we go into uh, custom applications like if we need something that like a bigger electric motor yes we can do that and therefore we can we can build a lower cost electric vehicle than we can get using off-the-shelf motors I mean the case uh, because the case is it's not we're not making this stuff that oh it's gonna take us a hundred hours to make an electric motor no we are competing with industrial production so yeah. efficient so uh, so we have to meet or exceed industrial productivity but on a small scale now that's a significant engineering challenge for which yeah, we need an AT. Yeah. <laughs> we're reworking the production engineering for distributed production that's essentially what we're doing so uh in the short term we can be using these other components but we're kind of looking at more like 10 about a 10 year time frame for us where we open source down to things like air bearing lathes uh, for super precise components, um, then materials and other things. So, so yeah, uh, I mean, literally, the the promise of the the global village construction set is real. It's it's about about open sourcing that infrastructure, so uh, there's more access to it. The other part that you have not mentioned is, or I haven't mentioned, is the environmental aspect of that. So, if you can recycle, repurpose modify yep then you extend the lifetime so it's about lifetime design that is not that easy with just off-the-shelf things they typically end up in a junk junkyard um in yeah, the it's, yeah, there's this, this gigantic so, uh, feed pile of feedstock in the in the cast offs of, of modern society you right? can you and can. uh it's it's you know I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I would uh, personally. I mean, uh, I think this is a way to get a leg up on the uh, on the energy thing for you very can. For scrap oh, well. type investments. You can you can buy materials and things that are that are that are already made and yeah. Re yeah, repair them and uh, and uh, and repurpose them. Right. So this is pretty powerful as well. So. We do that as much as we can. And uh, the one aspect that we pay attention to is high replicability. So we're not saying one-off products, which you'd have to kind of be skilled that way if you're going for, you have to be the blacksmith. Right. We're not requiring blacksmith skills in this. We're saying, okay, you can lower the skill requirement a little bit, but you have to have full control over what you're building because to modify something that's not, that's not transparent or maybe doesn't have plans or is made in a way that, that doesn't lend itself to that, Right. It's very hard to do that. So we want replicability and therefore have full control over the, the produ production of the parts so that people can make viable enterprises. Like you, People got to start making a living out of this, so it has to be replicable. It can't be everything is a one-off job because then uh, you can only do so much with craft production. Uh, you want some things that are readily replicable anywhere. Well, yeah, that relies techniques. on the craftsman. That implies yeah. kind of one person that does... Uh, does this thing the blacksmith or yeah. the uh, the village tractor builder or whatever right and uh so how do you how do you decentralize some of those things and uh, and put them into more people's hands right yeah, and, uh, yeah. um so I, I get it but it's uh, um it's it's uh, certainly seems challenging uh, uh to simplify it i mean i using the electric motor you know, I just think of the electric motor factory and the investment in the equipment that they use to wind these things and uh, and build these motors, and let alone quality control. Okay, I mean that's a whole. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna manufacture, right, uh, you have to understand your uh, uh, your tolerances and your and your and main, maintain records on quality and build. So there's a there's a reason they centralize some of these things, right? Because it's more efficient to do that, right? And uh, um, 
you know, and centralize that and all your, and then the other thing that came to mind too is now you've got a million people that are, that are etching their own circuit boards, right? So what do you do with that waste stream, right? So, you know, now they, they're, they're producing this in their backyard or their back shed and they're pouring the, uh, they're pouring their waste materials in the, uh, in the ground behind their shop, right? And, uh, um, and, you know, this is what some of the problems with offshore manufacturing with, with cheap labor, right, is they're not working to the same kinds of environmental standards that uh, some of these large manufa centralized manufacturing um, entities are too, right? And uh, so now are you creating a, a, a hundred thousand little uh, uh, pollution concentrations by decentralizing this or are you willing, you know, is it one big one instead, right? Or a larger one instead? Yeah, the, the case can be made either way that one or the other can be more effective to get mm -hmm. very specific on what you said about the etching. We're yeah. using a particular route where the thing is 100% recyclable so it never ends up in the waste stream. That's so, great. Yeah, those are those are certainly considerations, right? You know, right. create so, environmental disasters wherever yeah. uh, you, you do work or whatever, right? So. Yeah, so definitely we're part of it. One of the motivations there is to internalize the environmental issues because uh, we can make a case that, yeah, we'd actually do better. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, it depends, but we're definitely paying attention to that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Distributed quality control has to be has to be addressed, and that's through standards organizations. It has to be just an equivalent to what the current system does, but in a distributed way. Yeah. So that's all part of the, the, the challenge, and that will be a great challenge for the open source uh, cordless 3D printed cordless drill professional grade. Yeah. How do you how do you uh, address quality control in a distributed yeah. scenario? That's um, I think we have some really good ideas about that and. And, um, but it has to all be implemented, so we're, we're working on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to end this call pretty soon. So, yep. Marcin, um, um, stay in contact. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and um, if I can if I can help you somehow, I'm uh, I'm willing to. Yeah. Help you out a bit, okay. That would be great. So, um, I'm not quite clear on that, what that is just yet, but yeah, uh, I mean, keep pinging me. Yeah, I think the main limit here is the time that you have available right now. It doesn't seem like, because um, it does require that you would learn the curriculum so you could teach it. We are all presenting them at the same, like we run them on the same day so we can get help from each other, but you'd have to be able to do it on your own too. Right. So the only other thing, like, I don't know if you can pass this on. I can, I can send you a note of what you can pass on to others in your network if you can help us find any other people, but they'll be... No, I, I know some folks that uh, this is uh, uh, something that might get them excited, so uh -huh. uh, I'm happy to pass that along. So, yeah. Yeah. Any particular names that stand out right now who, who you think would be a great candidate? Um, so, um, I, I have a friend and his girlfriend that uh, um, they don't they build uh, they build electric vehicles, and then um, uh, they're building a couple right now. So, they would they also uh, uh, understand machine tools and use machine tools and those kinds of things as well and uh, um, they they might be interested in, uh, in taking a peek at it and um, um, but I'd let that I'd let them decide uh, yeah so if you this note that you have I would just yeah. forward it on to them and uh, let them take a look at it and establish contact if they wanted to get involved or okay more at least so yeah yeah, yeah that'd be great that'd be yeah. great um, yeah well, thank you for your time. Yeah, we'll keep in touch. See if see if we can see some cl clear point of entry here. We'll yeah, if there, maybe it's just something a, a piece and uh, um, you know that you can break off that's appropriate, right? And uh, and you know that's uh, something that furthers your cause a little bit. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you can take a look at again at the curriculum. Like, there's a specific outline for day one through four. I mean, see if there's anything that you can say. Hey, yeah, I can. Talk did you about send me it. that or what? I, I did. Um, Okay, let me uh, go back and uh, so if you go okay so this is the Google Doc here uh, mm, almost but there's a day by day I'll, I'll send you the let me see Tom Lip. this is this is the one about uh, Austria is the one I'm looking at here yeah not not exactly that one just the uh, that does have the link to it but I wanted to s send you directly to the link oh here it is 
uh, open source wiki Steam Camp curriculum. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that. Uh, look at the first four days, and if, you, if anything strikes you, as you can. Okay, I can. I have that, or I can prepare that element. And let me, let me know right. if that's the case. Because it does require adaptation to the overall product ecology, and it, it's not just some random piece. It has to fit. Uh -huh. It has to be adapted at the very least to what we're working with. So it's a it's a okay day one holistic package. Okay, well, let me let me re read this a little more thoroughly here. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, see if there's something that I can dovetail in on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay. Okay. Well, Tom, thank you very much for your time. And all right. Yeah, we'll Thanks for touch. talking. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye bye.